Hello, I'd like to welcome you to the Heaven or Hell broadcast. My name is Ben Copley, and this is Sarah Zasser. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite you all to, to call in tonight with any Bible questions that you might have. Uh, also, uh, at any time, we do have a Bible study through the week. Uh, currently, we're meeting about on Saturdays uh, around 4 o'clock, uh, which is subject to exchange. But uh, we also have a uh, Sunday broadcast uh, that's taped from our, uh, our Bible studies that you can watch, and that's Sunday at 4. Um, so anyway, um, I guess tonight we, uh, we might do, uh, start off with just a conversation about uh, some of the comparisons between uh, the but now time period that we're in and the time past. And uh, to demonstrate that, I would just like to go to Ephesians chapter 2. And we can read where Paul demonstrates that there is a but now time period and a time past. And then we'll get into some of the distinctions about uh, the but now period and the time past period. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. <clears throat> but now in, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Right here we see a very clear and plain uh, demonstration that uh, there's a time period uh, in, in the time past uh, that we were considered Gentiles. And what Gentile means is anybody basically that's not a Jew, uh, somebody that is one of the nations other than a Jew uh, is considered a Gentile. And Paul says that at that time, uh, you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circum uh, uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that time, that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Uh, and let's look at uh, an example of the, 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 that time period uh, in your Bible. And some people um, would follow Christ in his earthly ministry to... Um, for their for their doctrine today, but Christ in His earthly ministry, the funny thing about it is, is told His apostles uh, to not go in the way of the Gentiles. Um, let me go to um, Matthew chapter ten. This is what it is. Matthew chapter ten. There's a couple passages actually back here in Matthew that we can go to that are real. Um, easy and, and plain uh, to see that at this time during Christ's earthly ministry that there was a difference between the Jew and Gentile. Uh, Matthew chapter 10 and we can start uh, let's start in, in uh, 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and this is after he, uh, a, the recorded uh, th this is after Matthew recorded the names of the 12 apostles it says these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely ye give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your, per in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. But we see here um, a couple of things that's going on in uh, this time period. First, Christ tells his 12 apostles, it says, go not in the way of the Gentiles, uh, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye into your not. And there's two, two categories of people there. A Gentile, of course, like I said, was is a anybody in the world that's outside of the Jewish camp. Um, and then a Samaritan is a basically half Jew and half Gentile. Um, God told the nation of Israel to be separate uh, and not to, to marry uh, people that were uh, Gentiles, to, not to marry the women. Uh, they weren't supposed to mix and mingle with other um, 
nations and, and races in the, on the earth, but of course they, they broke God's commandments and there were some Jews that went outside of the nation to marry and have families and um, those uh, were uh, called the Samaritans. Basically they were half, half Jew and half Gentile. Um, and so in verse 6 it says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So whether you are Jew, I mean, excuse me, whether you are Gentile or you are half Jew and half Gentile, at the time of Christ's earthly ministry, uh, you, you, there was no uh, direct gospel that was for you. Uh, this, this gospel it here is called the gospel of the kingdom. That's why... Um, it says here in um, verse 7, it says, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And uh, and what I think is fascinating is, as you draw this distinction between time past and but now, when we look at our Bibles, they are divi the books are divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. However, I think it's important to point out that Matthew, although it is in the New Testament, Right. is still part of this time past right. distinction. Mm -hmm. That's right. And actually, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then also the first part of Acts, is just a continuation of the Jewish uh, time period, the, 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 the time past time period. Uh, you have basically three different um, areas of that time past uh, in the Jewish um, in the Jewish. Um, from the time that they were created or brought out to the time that they were uh, cast cast down or set aside, there's three different uh, ministries there. Uh, the first ministry was the ministry of of, of God the Father uh, throughout um, all of your Old Testament. You know, from uh, Malachi back, that was the ministry of God the Father, and then. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John records the earthly ministry of Christ. So that's the ministry of the Son. And then in the early Acts period, you can see the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Um, and so they, they, the nation of Israel was ministered three different ways, through the ministry of God the Father, through, through God the Son, and, the whole, and God the Holy Spirit. And they denied him three times. Uh, and that's why basically it was three strikes and they were out. And God had to either judge the world, uh, the, the seven, uh, seven years of tribulation, uh, Daniel's 70th week, which is the, the only thing left that's on the prophetic calendar. He either had to take and, and judge the world or he had to do what he did. And that was to um, put in a parenthesis, if you would, uh, in the world's history uh, so that he might uh, dispense his grace, uh, call out the Apostle Paul and us have this dispensation of the grace of God, which Paul talks about uh, in Ephesians chapter 3 and, and many other places in, in the Bible. And what a blessing it is that he gave us that grace. That's right. Yeah, that, and it's, a, it, I mean, God's always been long-suffering, but like I said, the only thing that was left for the world when 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 the nation of Israel stoned uh, Stephen, the only thing that was left for the world was God's wrath. And you read about God's wrath, of course, in Revelations, and it it scares the pants off of most everybody. Um, and it, it should, because it's going to be a time of fierce and terrible uh, wrath and judgment that the world has never seen. Uh, the Bible says that uh, God is going to, to dissolve this this world as we know it, the heaven and the earth, and the earth he's going to dissolve it with a, a, a terrible fervent heat. Uh, the elements are going to melt and there's nothing that's going to survive it. Um, this this existence of, of our globe that we live on is going to be dis, you know just disintegrated and gone. Uh, everybody that's um, here on earth is going to be you know burn up in the in the heat and it's going to be gone. Um, you know, if mankind, you know, and I don't think this is going to happen, but if mankind ever did get the technology to shoot them out into space like it shows on Star Trek, God's going to burn up the heavens also with a fervent heat, and they're going to be gone. And there is no man that's going to make it through uh, that time of God's judgment uh, by their own means. Uh, the only way that you can make it uh, beyond that judgment is through God's righteousness, Him counting you to... Uh, righteous uh, and, and, and raising you back up again like he did his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you started to draw the distinctions between 
time passed and but now. Mm -hmm. And one of those main distinctions is now grace is offered to all of us. Right. Thank you for calling heaven or hell. What is your question? So uh, the, um, the um, and she mentioned that uh, that the, the gospel is offered to, unto all men without distinction. And, of course, you can go to Romans chapter 3 uh, to demonstrate that. Romans chapter 3 and verse um, 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Thank you for call calling heaven or hell. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. If we're already saved by what Christ did, can we live however we want? If we're already saved by what Christ did, can we live however you want? Thank you for your thank question. Thank you. Well, um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a tricky question. Um, it, I mean, it is and it isn't. It's never God's will for any man to sin. You can look in Romans chapter 6 and see that very question uh, that the, the lady, the kind lady just asked. Um, Romans chapter 6 and verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You know, can I just continue to go out there and live however I want just to make God's grace look even better or, you know, without any repercussion or uh, anything uh, happening to me. Uh, and, you know, the answer to that question, verse 2, Paul says, God forbid, you know, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us uh, as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Um, it says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Um, so that verse there, you know, Paul says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And then he goes in and explain how that you don't have to live any longer therein in that sin. You, uh, you are now... It says, baptized into Jesus Christ. And you're baptized into, into his death. Um, it says uh, that, it says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And that's an identification. We're identified with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in his death. So he died for sin, and we're identified with that. And it says, even the, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like his cross was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. The Lord Jesus Christ was also raised up. He died for sin, and he was raised up uh, for our, our, our justification. And that's what it says there in Romans chapter 4, verse um, 25. It says, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question for us this evening? Uh, yes, you mentioned being baptized and being identified in, with the body of Christ. Uh, does a person have to be baptized uh, in order to be saved? Thank you so much for your question. Does a person have to be baptized in order to be saved? Um, well, that's it, I, it depends on what kind of baptism that we're talking about. If a person... Um, does a person have to be baptized in water to be saved? And the answer is no. Uh, does a person have to be baptized, like this verse says here, baptized into Jesus Christ and be you know, baptized into his death? Then the answer is yes. Go to, uh, going to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 by chance. I don't know. <laughs> okay. First Corinthians chapter 12, uh, I'd say it's probably, uh, we're going, verse uh, 13 says, For by one spirit were we all baptized into one body. And stop there. Thank you for calling heaven or hell. Do you have a question? Thank you for calling heaven or hell. Do you have a Can you turn down your TV, please? Precious, 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 Ma'am, can you turn your TV down? Hello? 
who requested special places for themselves in Jesus' kingdom. Um, I we I still didn't quite hear your question. Can you, uh, you repeat it one more time? Okay. Um, is that the verse that you were looking it for? Was. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, it says, "For by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free. We have, uh, we, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Uh, so there is there's one one baptism there." Uh, uh, that uh, we're all baptized in because Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 uh, tells us that there's only truly one baptism. Ephesians chapter 4 uh, and verse uh, verse 4 it says there is, for there is one body and one spirit even as you're called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And so there's there's only one type of baptism, and Paul gives us what uh, the the example of what that baptism is. There are types of baptism. There was a shadow of what this baptism, act, you know, is uh, back in the Old Testament. Um, even even the flood of of of, of Noah was a type of, of baptism. Uh, it was a showing of of, of death. It was a, it's just a shadow. Uh, a cleansing, if you would, of the earth. The Levitical priesthood, there were certain ceremony, cl ceremonial cleansings that they had to go through uh, before they could enter into the temple, into the Holy of Holies. Um, Christ baptism uh, by John the Baptist, by John the Baptist, uh, said, explains it there that there's, um, there's a, a baptism uh, that Christ went through, but there's also a baptism of fire that's going to take place in a future time, and that's the that's basically uh, a shadow of his um, of the Spirit, uh, the indwelling Holy Spirit, uh, like what happened uh, on the day of Pentecost uh, to the believers. Uh, the 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 Spirit came down, and it looked like uh, cloven tongues of fire, and landed on. Landed on Peter and the twelve, and they began to speak in, in new tongues. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question for us this evening? Yes. Okay, go ahead, caller. Okay, right. Uh, I want to know uh, uh, what was it? It was man, man, how to live perfect? Uh, God to be you perfect, I am perfect. What did it mean? Um, I. Couldn't quite understand you, Carl. We might have a little bit of an audio problem. Oh, okay. Try it one more time. Let it be ye perfect, for I am perfect. That's what the Bible does. God said. That we're perfect. Yeah. Be be ye perfect, is what God said. Right. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. Right. Now, now some people say, man can't live perfect. No, 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 who, no, who, no, 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 that 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 is correct, and there's another verse that's uh, similar to that uh, in Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. Second um, Timothy chapter three verse sixteen uh, says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works." Uh, and 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 please notice that that word there on the page, uh, thoroughly, is not thoroughly. It's not uh, that you uh, are thoroughly furnished. It's thoroughly furnished. That means that He has given you everything in the world that you need to be furnished unto good works. And so, um, the 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 caller asked, uh, how, what does a man uh, go? Where does a man go? Go from there. The understanding that God uh, God says, "Be ye perfect," or this verse that says that the man of God may be perfect, uh, knowing that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. What the like what the apostle Paul says there in in Romans chapter seven. Uh, where do we go uh, from there? And where the only way that I can reconcile that is by. What it says, let's start in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, 13. Uh, when we trust 
uh, the gospel, and we'll just read the verse and let it speak for itself. In, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, um, let me back up, in verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. So when you heard the word, when you heard the gospel, you trusted it. The gospel of your salvation, you trusted that gospel. In whom also, after that ye believed, or you trusted in it, uh, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. And so there's a there's something that's been placed into you that's called God the Holy Spirit. And it's been placed in you as an earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. And that's in, unto, until uh, the redemption of our body when we receive uh, our new body and go out into eternity future with Jesus Christ and the Father. And so the the perfectness that we have now like that verse back there in, in 2 Timothy says, is we have this Holy Spirit in us that's able to read God's Word, and it's good, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that that Holy Spirit can grow, and, and that's the perfectness that's in you. In your flesh, like what Paul says there in uh, Romans chapter 7, in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. Let's see here. Um, read in uh, Romans chapter 7 well. well you look for that verse in Romans 7 if you turn to Galatians 3.3 3, it asks are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh Right. and it's important to know as Christians we have that ongoing battle between the spirit within us and our fleshly human nature. Right. And along that same line, Romans 12, 2, tells us to be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. It's by studying and by feeding the Holy Spirit that's within us that we will be transformed by renewing our minds. However, in our fleshly bodies, we will not be able to achieve perfection. And that's what that's what the Apostle Paul, that holy that seed of the Holy Spirit in you, that's what Paul calls the new man. Uh, if you would go back uh, and I'll turn my page again, but Romans chapter seven, Paul demonstrates the conflict that he has that in his flesh, you know, dwells no good thing, but there's something that's in him that is perfect that delights in the law of God. Um, let's see here. We can just let's just start in um, verse 13, um, and it's talking about the law. It says, "Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid! But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful." Let's stop there. <laughs> Thank you for calling heaven or hell. How can yeah. we help you tonight? Yeah, uh, I'm calling. The Bible says said that uh, uh said the Holy Spirit won't dwell in the in, 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 un, un, unclean body. Otherwise that does fall fight good between the flesh and the and the and the, and the spirit. Said that it won't be in in no unclean body. You know what I'm saying? So what what what, what do you mean by that? Uh, I don't. Uh, th did you say that the the Bible said that there wouldn't be a war between the flesh? Oh, there, will, there is a war between the flesh and the spirit. There is a war between the flesh and the spirit. Right, and so it won't it won't dwell. So the spirit, so the Holy Spirit will not dwell in no unclean body. You know what I'm saying? Unclean body. Okay, now that's now that's called the circumcision made without hands. What Paul talks about in Colossians chapter two. That's the cutting away of the uh, the flesh. <laughs> Uh, the, the, from the, the spirit and the soul, uh, and that's the operation of God. That's how uh, that the Holy Spirit can dwell in a believer today, and that's that's the baptism uh, that we were talking about earlier. That's basically the spiritual cleansing uh, that allowed that Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us. Uh, Colossians chapter two. 
in verse uh, 9 through um, 13, 14, um, you know, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. And that completeness is that perfectness uh, that we're talking about there in Second Timothy uh, chapter 3. Uh, it says, Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you for calling heaven or hell. What's your question this evening? Okay. Um, in verse 11, it says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body. See, that's the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Do you have a question for us this evening? Uh, yes, I do, actually. Okay. Go ahead. Well, uh, I was curious to see. Christians, Jews, and Muslims, basically they all have the same God. No, not really. Because Jews and Christians follow, you know, the God of the Hebrews. But the Muslims, are, their God, Allah, is basically the same representation of the Hebrew God just told through the eyes of Ishmael's people. Yeah, but uh, the, 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 the Bible also says that there's one me mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. And the, the, the Christian faith proclaimed Jesus Christ as the Son of God. He was born of a virgin, uh, conceived in the Holy, uh, through the Holy Spirit, uh, had no sin nature, and uh, there's a big difference between what Christians believe and what the Jews and the Muslims believe, because neither the Muslims or the Jews accept that fact. Thank you for calling heaven or hell. Do you have a question this evening? Yeah, I was, I was just talking about the Hebrews and the Muslims, and I got hung up on. <laughs> well, the the thing about it is, though, is I, we don't really want to debate the idea that that the the God of the Hebrews and the God of uh, the, the Muslims and the God of the of, of the Christians are the same God because we don't believe that 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 they are and the Christians don't believe that they are and the Muslims don't believe that they are the Muslims are uh, uh, would probably accept it more so than what the Jew or the Christian would but I, I you can't say that if you went and talked to a Jew, that that Jew would accept the idea that his the God that he trusted in is the same God uh, that the Muslims trust in. Thank you for calling heaven or hell. Um, yeah, how did you get um, on live? Uh, you come down and fill out, fill out an application uh, and pay money. Is that what you mean? No, I mean they're doing questions and answers right now. Okay, you're on live. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question, and it's uh, how do you know that God is real? Uh, how do I gut know that God is real? Uh, well, do you want to handle that one? Well, oh. I want to approach this from a logical standpoint because... Here, let me just write that one down. Okay, Next we'll time. come back to that question in just a second. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question this evening? Uh, I'd like to call back because I really want to hear you answer this gentleman's question. So I'll call back later, all right? Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, how do we know that God is real? Uh, Romans chapter 1 uh, is the... Uh, you, were, uh, you were well on your way. You go right ahead. Let okay, me grab we'll get back first. to this one. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Hello, this is Brother Paul. How you doing, Brother Ben? You're hey, doing Paul. a great job. Thanks, man. Yeah, I just thought I'd call. I'm catching the show from a remote location, and I wanted to kind of help you out a little bit on this if I could and and just tell you that uh, as far as uh, uh, knowing that God is real, historically you can prove that God is real. Uh, Jesus is an historical figure. And uh, we can we can prove that through history, all the miracles that were performed, and he was raised from the dead. Um, it's a wonderful thing to trust in a in a savior that is uh, truly alive, and uh, other things that we're 
I've heard you guys discuss so far about uh, you know the mixture of the flesh and the spirit, but uh, we rely on the righteousness of Christ, and that's what we're given, the completeness of Christ. It's not us at all. You know, even Paul said, uh, you know, all the stuff that he could consider himself more righteous than anyone. Right. You know, and uh, and we if we're going to trust in ourselves, um, you know, we're going to fail miserably. But uh, we trust that Christ did it for us, and He is He has made us complete in Him. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to to know that uh, Christ lives, and and uh, our hope of our glory is with Him. Right. Now he's promised us the same thing that he has. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And uh, without the resurrection, there is no hope. And we know that, um, you know, just through just without biblical information, without the, the information we have to know to be the word of God, we can prove God to be real. Even the glory of God is revealed just around us through, through the creation. Yeah, absolutely. And right. I, uh, only a fool would believe that there is no God and uh, but uh, well, that's what it says in Proverbs right absolutely the fool brother. says that there is no God absolutely you're doing a wonderful job there and uh, um, I'm gonna miss this ministry uh, um, uh, greatly and I just pray for you guys to do it to that everything goes well for you well, maybe you can call us from a remote location up in Michigan here in a few weeks. <laughs> there you go, brother. Okay, man. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you, Paul. And I think if you look across civilizations, past and present, you will see that most of them have a higher being, so that humanity is seeking something beyond mm. ourselves. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Um, yeah, it was just called in and I got disconnected um, I was talking about how do you know that there is a God right yes and but my question is is why do innocent children you know get born with birth defects and why do you know people who always do good in their life why does their life end early if God is real why doesn't he perform these miracles and save these innocent children who never did anything to anyone okay thank you for your question and are zombies real I don't really think zombies are real. Uh, I teach my kids not to believe in fairy tales uh, and zombies um, and and vampires or anything like that. But as far as the the question about why are babies uh, born stillborn? Uh, why why are people that live their life in seemingly uh, good, good standing as far as being very moral. You know, good lives. You know, don't really do any harm to anybody. Uh, we can look in Romans chapter eight and try to get to that here in a second. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Uh, yes, the Bible says that when you die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But it also says that the dead know nothing. So where does uh what what, 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 what is verse mean? can you look at that ver Am look up here in heaven or when, can we can you tell me what verse that is to be absent with the body is no that the dead know nothing the dead know nothing the dead know nothing I know Paul said it <laughs> not sure which verse it is so uh, um I don't know that that verse so I really can't. Uh, comment on that verse. Uh, I know what it means to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Uh, as soon as we die, uh, our body goes to the grave, and we will basically like uh, you know what happened with Lazarus and the rich man. They they uh, they began an existence even though they didn't necessarily have a body uh, in the afterlife. Uh, there. Uh, in that in that rich man and, and Lazarus uh, the story, uh, Lazarus was there and he was in Abraham's bosom. He was there uh, in the with the in the presence of Abraham the father, you know his father, uh, the father of the nation of Israel, uh, and all those that were saved. And there was a great gulf that was fixed between um, paradise and torment. And the rich man went to torment, and 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 Lazarus went to uh, to paradise. Um, so, uh, let's see here, you know, like I said, as far as the other verse goes, I really can't comment 
on that verse unless we could actually read it. And if the caller cares to look up the verse and call us back, we'll, uh, we'll, we can examine the verse and, and see if we can come up with the context of the verse and wh what it actually means. Uh, okay. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question this evening? Yes, let me ask you a question. Okay, can you speak up just a little bit? We're having a little bit of a... Um, okay, there you go. Okay, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. You know, but uh, why does everybody want to get, you know, where... Um, You know, ashes when you die. What's up? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't quite understand the question. You know, ashes. Ashes like cremation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why do why do certain people want to do that? Yeah. Sure, I don't know. You know, I I don't think that it's really a, a, a major issue either way. You know, um, it's that uh, whether you're buried or burnt or buried at sea, um, your your flesh is going to go into a state of uh, just minerals and dust, basically. Um, so. Um, you know, I know that there's uh, there were uh, instructions for the Jews not to to, to be burnt, uh, but there again, that was part of time past, and I really it's really a, a non-issue to me because we don't necessarily go by the law of Moses. Um, we have liberty basically to to choose those things uh, if we wanted to. It's a lot cheaper for some people to do it that way, you know. Um, so some people that may not have the means to get buried and, uh, you know, really being cremated is probably as, as pagan um, as what uh, getting, not cremated, but getting embalmed uh, like the mummies did is probably as pagan as getting cremated uh, is. If, you're, if you were really to follow what the law was, you needed to be buried quickly, you know, you need to be put in the ground and they really didn't do much to you, you know, just a few, uh, uh, go ahead, we'll just stop there. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Yes, uh, I'd like to comment on the question about the, yes, I'd like to comment on the question he was looking for, uh, about the living, no, it's not anything. Right. Okay. That's uh, Ecclesiastes nine and five. Okay, I just got yeah. Somebody just uh, just gave me that uh, uh, that note, and we can uh, we can turn there to uh, see if we can just develop the the context of what the the passage is uh, is actually saying uh, there. Ecclesiastes nine five. Okay, the verse says, um, let's, uh, let's back up and see if we can get a little bit of context. Um, let's start in, shoot, I don't know where to start. I'm not really familiar with this verse. Um, we'll start in three and see if we can develop a little bit of context. And if we got to, we'll back up even farther and do it again. It says, uh, this is an evil among the, all things that are done under the sun that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know uh, that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. And also uh, their love and their uh, hatred and their envy is now perished. 
uh, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Okay, and so this to me seems like that the dead uh, don't have um, a consciousness of what they desired or what was going on uh, in this present uh, life. Um, because it says there in 5, it says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the, the memory of them is forgotten. And that memory there is probably, you know, I don't, like I said, I'm not too familiar with it, but it seems like it would be the memory of the things that were done uh, in this life. And that's probably what they don't know any longer. I'm not sure, though. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question this evening? Yes, I was wondering, what do you all think about the fundamentalist views of uh, the second coming being Saturday? I know the the Bible says that no man knoweth the hour. Where do they get where do they get their information from? Okay, um, I'm not sure about that either. This, as far as this being on a Saturday, uh, most fundamentalists uh, that I know, uh, and I call myself a fundamentalist. Uh, says that they know, uh, you know, we know not the hour. We don't know exactly when he's coming back uh, for um, uh, the body uh, of Christ, and, and we know not when he's coming back for judgment. You know, uh, that's uh, something that only the Father knows. Um, I don't really get into trying to set dates. Uh, there's been plenty of people on uh, on this earth that have tried to set a date about when Christ is coming back. And they were wrong. You know, obviously, if he hasn't come back, you know, they were dead wrong. Uh, it's important for us to realize that we live in the dispensation of the grace of God, which is not characterized by works. God tells us that we are, we are saved without works. And Paul tells us that tongues and, and prophecies will, will vanish away. Go ahead. We'll go ahead. We'll come back to that if we get a chance. Thank you for calling. Do you have a question this evening? Uh, I have a comment on an earlier question. Okay. Uh, I had, you had a gentleman call in and ask about the difference between Christians and Muslims and Christians and Orthodox Jews, and I would like to elaborate a little bit on that, if I may. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll make it short. The difference between Christians and Muslims, as it refers to God, is we believe there is, Christians believe there is one God, revealed in the scriptures the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Right. Within one essence of the Godhead, there are three persons who are co-equally and co-eternally God. Right. And the Muslims believe there is only one person in the Godhead. Allah means the God. Right. And Jesus Christ, Christians believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is one with the Father. He is the sinless redeemer of sinful man through his death on the cross and resurrection from the dead. Right. The Muslims believe Jesus Christ was only a man, right. a prophet equal to Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Moses, all of whom are below Muhammad in importance. Right. Christ did not die for mankind's sins. In fact, Jesus, not Jesus, died on the cross. And they, we believe sin is proud, independent, rebellion against God in active or passive form. Right. Muslims believe... Sin is failure to do all his will, failure to do one's religious duties as outlined in the five pillars of the faith. As for salvation, we believe Jesus died for our sins. They believe people earn their own salvation. Right, they don't believe that a person could die and pay for the sins of another person. That's correct. Right. Now, as for Orthodox Jews, like I said, we believe there's only one God existing as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They believe the Godhead exists as only one person. Right, they didn't, uh, thrill. That's why the uh, God. That's why the Sadducees didn't didn't believe in the resurrection, and they didn't believe in the spirit. Um, they didn't. They didn't. Which, if you if you got to realize that by the time Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John came around, that the the Pharisees and the Sadducees that you see were as steeped in pagan worship as anybody that was outside of the nation of Israel. So you really can't characterize Orthodox Jews that um, that you can see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John as true Israel. The things that they were doing 
were wrong. That's why the Sadducees didn't believe in angel and spirit. And that's why they had a hard time accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, um, like the lady said. Um, it, it, so, because they were, they didn't, they didn't trust that the Spirit could come and rest uh, in Christ, uh, and that He could be God and man in the same being. Um, and so, uh, as far as you know, as far as that goes, uh, you know. You're not going to ask a, a, a Christian. You're not going to get an answer from a Christian that they they would accept that that Christians trust the same God as what Muslims do. Uh, you're not going to get a Jew even to say that the the God that he trusts in is the same God as what the Muslims do. And now the Muslims are a little bit different because they're a, they're more of a, a, a an Eastern culture, uh, and so they incorporate. Uh, Buddhism and Hindu sometimes in their religion, which allows them, gives them the freedom uh, to have multiple uh, uh, views on what what God is, and that's called amalgamation. Um, and you know, certain Christian denominations are guilty of doing things like that, but a fundamentalist uh, Christian would never agree that he trusts in the same God as what Muslims. Uh, what Muslims do. Now, they would agree that they trust in the same God as what a Jew does, um, but of course there's then the, the, the difference between the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and the, being able to accept um, his payment. You know, the Jews would never accept that. Um, and so, you know, the Christians, of course, uh, you know, the Bible says that there is one mediator between God and man, that's the man Jesus, uh, man Jesus Christ. Um, so there's there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know that lady was talking about um, the Trinity, uh, which is a Bible doctrine. It's not a Bible word, but there are v very important. There's 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 one verse that's as plain as any of them about that there is a a godly existence in a three part being, and that's in First John. <clears throat> If we can. Okay, go ahead. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question? Yes, I was wondering if you could look up these two verses and tell me First uh, Peter 3.18. It says, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit, through whom also he went and preached to spirits in prison who had disobeyed long ago. And then in Matthew... It says, uh, when Jesus Christ died, Matthew 27, 50 through 53, it says, when he cried out again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks mm -hmm. and the caves were opened, and many bodies came out and walked in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, are the ones that walked in the city the ones who preached to in hell? I believe they are. If you look in Ephesians chapter... Um Chapter 4, uh, it also is another verse that I believe goes along with that. Uh, it says, uh, verse 7, But to unto every one of us is grace gi uh, given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high and led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Um, I believe when Christ, according to the Bible, that Christ went into uh, that chamber that was paradise um, and torment and went down there and preached um, probably preached the gospel of the kingdom to those that were before that time um, that couldn't have that gospel preached unto them because Christ hadn't came um, and those that uh, you know those that uh, accepted it uh, of course were, were raised up uh, and come up out of the grave uh, so um you know that's that's what I see in it. Got any comment on that one? No, I don't have any comments on that. But okay. I would like to go back to the question of how we know God is real, and I have <laughs> often wondered what my perspective would be if I had not been raised in a Christian home. And as I look through the, oh, let me take. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Uh, yes. Earlier you guys said that um, you're not judged according to your works. But in Matthew, it says that for thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. 
And I was just curious as what that means if you're not judged according to your works. Okay. Did Thank you, you for your question. Now, look, if we look back in Ephesians chapter 2, that was the first verse that we went to uh, at the start of the program. We've seen that there were two time periods. There's actually three in Ephesians chapter 2 uh, that you can look at. But from 11 through uh, 14, uh, you can see that there's a but now time period and a time past time period. And we demonstrated with just one verse that in time past, uh, the, the the ministry of, of Jesus Christ and the twelve apostles was to go into the lost sheep of the house of Israel and says go not into the way of the Gentiles uh, or into the any city of the Samaritans enter ye not um, you can also look in the early part of Acts and see that they were supposed to first go to uh, Jerusalem to the G Judea uh, then to the Samaritans and then to, unto the un utmost ends of the earth um, then when the Apostle Paul was called out it says to go of course, to the Gentiles, to the Samaritans, and then to them that are dwelling at Jerusalem. So there was a change that took place. And the 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 prior dispensation is a dispensation that's characterized by prophecy and by works. And the current dispensation is a dispensation that is characterized by uh, mystery, and you can look all over. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 is a good example. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, uh, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 16, uh, verse 25, talks about the mystery. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about the mystery Colossians chapter 2 talks about or Colossians chapter 1 talks about the mystery um, and the, there's uh, some information that God held back um, uh, in, if, in from time past that he has now revealed and he's offering it to all, uh, to all men uh, so that he might provoke Israel to jealousy uh, so that they might be saved in a future time uh, and so that's how uh, you can read those verses back there in Matthew and see that it seems like a person has to act right and do the right works to be saved. But then you look over here in Paul's message and you see that he says, saved by grace through faith, not of works, uh, not, um, now let me read the verse, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm right here, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so the verse here says that we're saved by grace through faith, and it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, when you trust, like what it says there in Ephesians chapter 1, and we just got a few minutes left, when you trust, when you hear the, Holy, the, the, the gospel, and when you believe it, when you trust it and believe it, God places in you the Holy Spirit. The operation of God is the circumcision made without hands, he baptizes you, identifies you with the Lord Jesus Christ, and calls you to be calls you a saint. Um, saint means to be to be washed. It's it's sanctified, to be counted as holy, to be set apart. And that's how He can place in you that Holy Spirit, and that's the perfectness that's in you. That's the new man that's in you. That that the Apostle Paul talks about uh, nourishing nourishing that new that new man, uh, building that new man up, uh, and and. So it, you have you have your old flesh, your old sin nature, but then you also have the new man in you, and it's God, the Holy Spirit, that's attached, permanently fixed to who you are, and so that becomes you. You now become a, a man that is attached, or a woman that is attached to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the perfectness that's in you, that you may be uh, fully, uh, through, thoroughly furnished. Uh, thoroughly equipped and able to do uh, to do God's work. Um, it says, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And along those same lines, Romans 3.21 further contrasts between the Jews which were saved through works and through the law when it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. 
Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Please proceed with your question. Okay. In Second Peter 3, 9, uh, God is reaching out in love to everyone and is not willing that any should perish, but all should come in repentance. Uh, because there are three judgments for the believer in Christ. The believer has already been judged for his or her sins by the death of Christ at Calvary. And the believer will someday stand before judgment at the seat of Christ to be judged for how he or Sir Herd lived as a Christian. And there is also the daily self judgment of the believer. But uh, God is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. Right. And that we should all be saved. Right. That's what uh, the Apostle Paul says there in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse um, verse 3 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of, all, of, of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Uh, where am I? Where I am orde whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray with everywhere with uh, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So uh, there again is a, an, another example that, of course, like the lady said, God will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to make a comment on the, the works issue and salvation. Um, before the cross, uh, when when you look at before the cross in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, even Christ had said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you know, you're, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of, of God. And uh, so when you look at those works issues, there's no way you could live up to those works issues. Right. And even even the, our apostle Paul, he says he could boast if he really wanted to boast in his uh, background. He said he would have been perfect, you know, but he counted all his dung. Right. There was no good thing in him. There is none good, no, not one. And, uh, you know, I just I wanted to kind of, uh, put that comment out there that uh, if you uh, look at time past and you are going to try to live as according to time past and not live in the butt now, then you're going to get yourself in trouble. Right. right? And and uh, of course, this is what the Knoxville Body of Christ stands for: is rightly dividing our word and understanding where we where we stand at today. Right. So um, that was my comment. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Paul. Again. Um, another, you know, to go with what Paul says there, uh, Galatians chapter 3, it says, For as many are, are, are under the works of the law are under the curse, for as written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in, the, written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. The, the, the law, and if you continue on in the verse, verse 24, it says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was there to show you that the works that you do are evil, that you can't perform works of righteousness, and that you need the Lord Jesus Christ to make you righteousness. You need to trust in his death be, and, and know that God was fully satisfied with that payment. And when you trust that information, God places in you that Holy Spirit, and he seals you up until the day of redemption. So uh, anyway, we got just a few seconds to go. I appreciate all your calls. We're going to have to skip this one. If you'd like to talk about it, just call the number on the bottom of your screen or uh, just email the, uh, the email address uh, on the screen. Um, I'd like to thank you all again. Check out or catch the, the Sunday broadcast at 4 p.m. Um, yeah, thank you very much.